So if you're someone who's experienced loss, pain, and someone who's had to fend for herself in this unforgiving world, where she doesn't really bother with her parents, and her parents don't bother her, but where some chose to be in the game, for Effie it was more to survive, but the game changes everyone because sometimes you're forced to do things out of your control, for example to protect others, commit murders where innocent people get hurt, or betray the ones you love, and Effie's been on the end of most of these situations, so she definitely gets the game and she's also someone who accepts who she is, and she even described herself as a monster because of how she betrayed Tariq at Cho in power. But as we move through this video, we're gonna run through why she still remains a little bit of a mystery, her backstory with what we know so far, what we've learned in Power Book 2 Ghost Season 1 and 2, but how we're still yet to learn the full origin story of Effie, which is what makes her character that much more intriguing. So when we were introduced to Effie in Season 6 Episode 2, she wasn't any ordinary student at Cho. She was a drug dealer, and there was someone else dealing on her turf, and that someone was Tariq St. Patrick. So we saw her warning Tariq to stop dealing, because he was taking her business, but then they started to work together, and we saw this relationship grow to the point where she opened up to Tariq about her brother being killed in a robbery gone wrong, how her mum was barely sober, but no mention of her father. Now at this point, even if Effie was growing feelings for Tariq, she quickly showed us in her eyes he was just competition first, and this was Tariq's first real lesson in the game, which was betrayal. So we saw Effie texting someone, the competition's renowned product, and she'll keep an eye on him, who to this day still remains a mystery. So let's focus on this for a moment, because something they've done in Power Book 2 Ghost is, exploit a small plot hole in the original Power series, where Felipe Lobos' organization was hit, which had a knock-on effect and the reason why Ghost and Tommy had to take on a bigger shipment, which is why the task force was formed in New York, because the way to get Felipe Lobos was through his New York distributor, who of course was Ghost and Tommy, but this was all thanks to Mecca who really changed the course of history in a lot of ways. But this was only revealed to us in Power Book 2 Ghost Season 2. So how does this relate to Effie? Well the text she sent to this mystery person in Power can be exploited as a small plot hole in the same way, and at some point in the future we could very well find out who Effie's connect was, who was supplying her in Power and Power Book 2 Ghost Season 1. A new connect could definitely help. You got one? You can have got better shit than my old guy and he stopped answering his phone a while back, so... So, fast forwarding it to Power Book 2 Go Season 2 for a brief moment, Effie did mention her connect and said he's not picked up his phone for a while, but this is all we've heard from Effie's connect, and this along with the text she sent is a story that they could pick up by introducing a new character or even a Power OG as a connect, but there aren't too many of them left. Now another story they could integrate with Effie's character is, her brother who was killed in a robbery gone wrong, and they really could connect the dots to a number of characters from Power, because there were plenty of robberies which went wrong, and they could take it back to the very first episode of Power and connect the dots back to Miguel Alvarez, and we've seen them do this in force with Liliana, Although Corny Kemp's ruled out any of Ghost or Kanan's kills being Effie's brother in one of her Q&As, we need to remember there is a new showrunner who could decide to do things a little different. So let's see where we are with Effie's character. Now, she wasn't a prominent figure in Season 1 of Ghost, but when she did appear, you really felt this connection between Tariq and Effie, and one where they could really make a formidable team if they could find a way of putting their past behind them and being able to work together. But the issue between them early on was trust, because of Effie's betrayal, and this is one of the main blocks in their relationship. They are two very similar characters who will always do what's best for themselves and put themselves first, but Effie and Tasha were only the two people Tariq could turn to in Season 1, and where Tasha tasked him to kill Epiphany, this is where Effie told him he is a monster just like she is, but it wasn't until Season 2 where we really saw this monster side from Effie herself. So as we saw Effie returning in Season 2, we knew she was going to be playing a bigger role than Season 1, but there were still a lot of unanswered questions, for example who was a connect, who was a brother that was murdered, could we trust Effie considering she stabbed Tariq in the back once before, and that was one of the biggest questions. Now of course, not all of these questions were answered, but one thing we've learned is, she does care about Tariq and her feelings grew stronger and stronger, which is why she ultimately killed Lauren, but there are a few reasons for why she did what she did. Now her relationship with Tariq was one of them, because she felt as if she needed to protect him, because he wasn't thinking about the consequences if Lauren stayed alive, but also because she understands the game, and where there can't be any loose ends, which is why when Tariq admitted she got Kane and Brayden on a wire, she said this. She might have gotten Kane and Brayden on a wire. What? She got Kane on the wire? 
This is the moment she knew it was game over for Lauren, because Kate knows the game and she knew what he'll do to a snitch. But it was actually Brayden who was tasked with a job to kill Lauren, but from a conversation with Brayden, she could tell Brayden wasn't ready to kill someone close to him or Tariq and this is why she had to take things into her own hands. And in essence, what she was doing was saving Brayden from killing someone and committing a murder because she knows once you kill, you're never the same again. And when she's admitted she's a monster, she was saving Brayden from turning into one himself. So she was there for Brayden and she also held it down for Tariq. Story's not over, Reek. It's just beginning. But something else which isn't over is Effie's relationship with Diana, which went from one where they started off fighting to where Diana actually reached out to Effie because she wanted to learn how Effie plays the game. Effie's smart, she goes college, and she moves Wade. And this is exactly what Diana wants to do. So we saw an unlikely bond grow between them, where she taught her how to boost clothes, which is another nod to Jukebox. Jukebox started off boosting clothes in Raising Kanan, and so was Effie. And there have been a few subtle hints to Jukebox, and this is another. I mean, it was him and me, Effie. I had no choice. You did what you had to do. You did what you had to do. But also how Effie is bisexual and how Duke also dig chicks. So the Duke and Effie references is something to watch as we move forward into season 3, 4, 5 and 6. But her story with Diana did take a turn with Effie warning her about Tariq and how she'd be saving herself a lot of grief by not fucking with him. But she's gone and done the complete opposite to the advice she was giving Diana. But what she doesn't know is Tariq's also slept with Diana as well, which could definitely cause some tension between the two at some point. But sticking with this conversation, something else which we learned about Effie was she's someone who's all alone in this world, who doesn't really speak to her parents, and this was a number of things we didn't know about Effie. So let's talk all things about season 3 and the things that we need to learn about Effie. So despite Effie being from season 6 of Power and two seasons of Ghost, a much of who she is still is a mystery and Courtney Kemp teased her mom is a mess and if you guys remember close readers of the series, Effie's brother is dead, he was murdered so keep that in mind. And this really does bring my video full circle to how they could connect the dots with Effie's character from small plot holes in the original Power and there is going to be a bigger focus on Effie's backstory in season 3. So this is something we definitely need to watch. But her relationship with Tariq following Lauren's death is huge. But it does have to be said, if Tariq does flip a switch at Effie for what she did to Lauren, he definitely would be a hypocrite because he can't judge her for what he would have done if it was anyone else. So he needs to respect Effie's decision was based on a number of factors, but to mainly keep him safe. But no doubt there will be fault lines and cracks between Effie and Tariq's relationship because of Lauren's death and they're also too similar and they will clash. But Effie's backstory with her connect and her brother, her relationship with Tariq, Diana, Brayden and maybe even Kane will be something to watch in season 3. So with that being said, drop all your thoughts down below on how we could potentially start to learn more about the origin story of Effie, her brother who was murdered in a robbery gone wrong, her parents and also her connect because there's definitely a few ways they could make a connection back to the original power. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section on all things Effie and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 2 Ghost and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.